Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'm back again with another video. In today's video, I might get a lot of people angry, but you getting angry will not stop me from being honest. I'm not just a vlogger, but I'm here on YouTube for a purpose. And if I don't achieve that, I will never quit this career. For me to leave my engineering career and pick up a camera to send a message across, means a lot to me i am maya i mean i got fans all over <laughs> listen to my message this is a coconut and for you to have best one the quality of food that you're looking for you need to start what weeding you weed the unwanted plants after that you can even go extreme by pruning but if you have this coconut as like in your backyard garden can even go a stream of watering this coconut every single day before this coconut what grows that is my message to my fellow brothers and sisters out there listen very carefully it's about solutions not the problem because we've already identified that this is the problem if you don't water this coconut it will never give you the fruit that you're looking for so you need to what act that is what the black community is lacking actions enough of the talking i mean this week has been so crazy everyone is talking China, China, China is taking our resources. Oh my goodness, how long are we going to continue talking? We already know the problem. What is the way forward? Immigration is not a crime. If you're watching this video, you might be from Ghana, but you're living in the United States. You might be from Nigeria, but you're living in the UK. You might be from Sierra Leone and you'll be living in China. So a Chinese person moving from China to Ghana or anywhere in Africa is not a crime. Tell me, is it a crime? It's not a crime. But what they are doing in here, ask yourself who is allowing them to do what they are doing. It's us, the Africans, because as an African man living in China, I cannot just go to any village in China and start digging for gold or digging for any natural resources that belongs to China. It doesn't happen. It's our own selves that are allowing all these things to happen. Almost everyone is angry on the internet. And bloggers and vloggers are taking advantage of the situation. They are sharing old footages that will make you more angry. I mean, I saw a video of people saying that the Tanzanian president cancelled a 10 billion loan from the Chinese people. That's an article somewhere 2016. And people are bringing it up and you think that something is happening? Hey brother, nothing is happening. All those stories that you've been seeing lately are old footages. I mean, so many people are tagging me in it. Every African man is angry about the way they are treating our fellow brothers and sisters in China. But let me ask you, is China the only country that is treating black people this way? No! So it's about time we sit down and think about why is all these things happening? What is the way forward? We've been saying for decades that Europeans are stealing from us. Chinese are stealing from us. But the question is, who is allowing these people to steal from us? Who? Have you asked yourself this question? Today I'm going to speak to you guys. I don't care. Like, I don't care whether you get mad or not. I, I, if I don't say this, I don't think I'm going to sleep. Who is taking those Chinese people to that mining site? These people start doing illegal businesses in Africa. To our government, it's legal. I mean, these people will be destroying water bodies and all that. I'm talking from experience my own country Chinese were doing illegal mining destroying water bodies but to the people in power it was legal but the citizens know that 
what you are doing is illegal because that minister or that governor from that state has a share in it. I did a documentary when I went to an illegal mining site somewhere in Asankagwa in the western region. And let me tell you something. There was a military man who was guarding the Chinese men mining the illegal. I mean, a military man from Ghana. We use our own people to protect them to steal from us. And when he's going to his country, the same people, the same military men are going to escort this whole thief and take him to the airport and he flies and go back. We need solutions, not always talking about our problems. This is why I've been saying that Africa needs a second independence. Not from what our colonizers, but the people leading the continent. If these people care about the continent so much, why are they not building factories? Why are we exporting our natural resources instead of them building factories and employing people to reduce unemployment in Africa? But rather, they will send their daughters and sons to Europe to go and study just like them because most of them have big, big degrees from big, big universities all over the world. Mention their names and you know what I'm talking about. It feels so sad that when an African man gets power, he thinks about what he's going to wear. He thinks about what he's going to possess. Like he wants to build houses, he wants to buy Lamborghinis, he wants to buy like big, big cars to show off that, yes, I have money. But that money can build a hospital. That money can build a factory to change something. We keep on importing a common toothpick, even a matchbox. They cut the trees from Africa, they take it to Europe or whatever, and they bring it to us. You know what? I went to Korea and I bought a chocolate called Ghana. Can you imagine? I asked them why did they call this chocolate Ghana? They said because the cocoa bean is coming from Ghana. Ghana is one of the top producers of what cocoa. Ask yourself how many chocolate factories do we have in Ghana? Nigeria, crude oil. They've been sucking Nigerian crude oil for so long. But the people living in that country is suffering. This is why I say that we need a second independence in Africa, not from our colonizers, but from the people leading the continent right now. Because it feels so sad to go to villages to see people, ordinary citizens of the country, suffering. Whilst these people live in mansions. You guys, I don't even get it. And when it comes to politics, they will come and tell you that I'll build you schools, I'll build you hospitals, I'll construct the best road for you. Is that a political message? Is that a party campaign message? We need factories, not hospitals or whatever. Those things are necessities. Even when you are building a hospital, you have to build a world-class hospital not just an ordinary one and I'm gonna come back again to you guys how COVID-19 has exposed our African leaders like I said this video is gonna get me into trouble but it do not stop me from speaking from the heart and one of the things that makes me so sad I know so many people are gonna get mad for me saying this but we are one of the incompetent race in this world very incompetent I'm so sorry forgive me why are we so incompetent when we see a black man speaking just giving speeches and then we feel like they are so powerful we have four powerful voices right now and I'm gonna call them out today tag them let them see this video tell them that it's a young village boy who is calling them out first of all Julius Malema you've been talking for so long are you waiting for you to become president before you start acting no 
You have a number of followers following you right now. If it's about actions, then tell them that, hey, brothers and sisters, those of you who are following us, Africa need factories. We're going to build a car factory where we're going to manufacture every single car from South Africa. That is action. Dr. Omar Johnson. Hey, that guy. I feel like he should get an award for speaking. He has been talking for so long. Yo, he came to China and he was charging a hundred dollars for a show. A hundred dollars. Just come and listen to him talk. A hundred dollars. What have you done since you've identified the problems of what? Um, the problems of Africa. What have you done? To change the whole situation what have you done to change whatever is happening we need actions enough of the talking if you want this coconut to grow you have to take care of it stop talking and act now I mean dr. Arikana you've now joined the talking movement speaking for Africa speaking you identify all the problems now you have the love of all the diaspora. Bring this diaspora together. Tell them that Africa is the place to be. We need to come back home and invest in the continent. Tell them to come back and build factories for the continent. Because we cannot always wait for the government. If they are not doing it, we can do it. And with the power that you have in your voice, you can definitely pull all these people back to the continent to come build factories. You don't have factories, so you cannot continue to be complaining about China taking over Africa once you know that you don't even have a single factory. That's even, what do you call it, um, even chocolate, you can't even manufacture. I forgot one person's name. Patrice Lumumba. Hey! I feel like this guy is the most sensible African man on earth. Whatever he says, so on point but please mr lumumba enough of the talking you have the love of so many young africans including me use your platform to tell africans that if politicians are not helping us we have to come together collectively build factories because i feel like that is the only solution if we know that we have factories in africa our brothers and sisters will never go to china to get discriminated this is the message on my heart and i just want to share with you all if you agree with me you can leave a comment if you disagree with me, I stand to be corrected. If you disagree, feel free and leave a comment. So boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, and if today's your first time seeing this face on your screen, please don't forget to join the family, subscribe, and support the movement.